<laughs> I know, Mr. Krabs. I'll miss you, too. I lost me bed! <laughs> Ahoy, mateys! It's a Bikini Bottom day. Just your daily reminder that SpongeBob once had a Broadway musical, and even Slater, much like Alex Brightman, was cheated out of a Tony! Oh well, so was Taylor Louderman. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk. I'm here to talk to you about SpongeBob SquarePants. Or more specifically, Mr. Krabs. And why he's so gosh darn cheap. This is not a South Park video. I can't curse as much as usual. Now, I've previously talked about SpongeBob a few times. After all, it's my favorite cartoon of all time. But the reason it's not one of my mainstay shows is it does not get enough views. Maybe it's because I talk about episodes instead of characters. Therefore, I shall try to remedy that. Now, SpongeBob has a reputation for going down the drain after Steven Hillenburg left during season four. Many characters succumbed to flanderization. If you're unaware, the term flanderization refers to when the writers take one of the character's traits and dials it up to a million. Like a character goes from being a little stupid to seemingly so dumb, you're 100% sure they were held underwater, which is ironic considering this show. One of the biggest victims is Mr. Krabs, who quickly became probably the show's most hated character. He went from a father figure who happened to like money but who had his limits to a corrupt miser who would lie, cheat, and steal just for a penny. You might think I'm crazy but that was actually an episode. <laughs> say Krabs declined in the later seasons, but honestly, he was always like this, especially in the pre-movie seasons. That's when most of his infamous moments happen. And this might be a hot take, but Krabs is actually one of my favorite characters, specifically because he's so cheap. Cotton candy! Get your cotton candy! Can't throw right that cotton candy! Okay, look, I will be the first to say Krabs was horrible in the later seasons in a bad way. And I think next to Patrick, his character took the biggest nosedive. But the reason it worked was he would always get comeuppance when he did something wrong, with very rare exceptions. Anyhow, let's discuss. In the world of SpongeBob, there's this dude named Mr. Krabs. And yes, I'm probably gonna call him Mr. Krabs every single time. He owns and operates the Krusty Krab, home of the Krabby Patty, because no one else would give it a home. <laughs> <laughs> I always call Mr. Krabs a G-rated Buck Strickland, and I still stick with that opinion. Typically, Mr. Krabs acts like a father figure to SpongeBob, as SpongeBob is responsible for taking his business to new heights. However, this is not always good. Like Buck Strickland, Krabs has a nasty habit of taking advantage of SpongeBob's naivete and kindness and giving little to nothing in return. Because at the end of the day, all Krabs wants is to make money. Money, money, I got money, 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 money. If you're watching SpongeBob, I dare you to take a shot every time Krabs mentions the word money or anything involving money. That means dimes, quarters, dollars, etc. Krabs will do whatever it takes to get money, real or imagined. And many of the show's plots come from his various insane ideas to earn a buck with the exception of selling his body on the street because this is a kid's show. First off, there's ARG. Wasn't that Patrick's new song? During a particularly slow day at the Krusty Krab, SpongeBob and Patrick decide to play a board game, The Flying Dutchman's Treasure Hunt. Rich, look Patrick, eight gold doubloons. Wait, I saw it first, yes! Dang, dude! They invite Mr. Krabs to play, but find that he is very, very competitive. Patrick, you're fired. I don't even work here. Would you like a job starting now? Why would I? You're fired. Krabs begins to like the game because you win money. Of course, it's not real money, but do you really want to ruin his fun? There it is! It's a flying Dutchman's treasure! Go, 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 go! Krabs, when you conceived your daughter, did you lie back and think of money? Because if you did, I can see why it got you so excited. There's also the fact that at the beginning of the episode, Krabs lamented that he could not bring in even one customer. 
Not a customer in sight. If I don't make any money today, I'll surely break out in a rash. And then once Fred walks in, ready to order a patty, Krabs tosses him out like an old newspaper. Rev up those fryers, cause I am sure hungry for one. Help! Help! Can't you see we're closed? They end up playing well into the night, long after closing, and long after SpongeBob's enthusiasm has died down. SpongeBob goes home. Huh? Who's there? Come on, SpongeBob. One more game. I can smell the treasure. Wait, where'd he get the table? Maybe he borrowed it from Squidward. Unable to get him to stop, SpongeBob tells Krabs likely the same thing Mrs. Puff tells him whenever she wants to teach him how to drive her boat. Mr. Krabs, I wanna go to bed! Instead, Krabs wants to have a real life treasure hunt with a real treasure map, which once again, I wonder where he got all that stuff. Did he borrow it like he did the table? Is it left over from his sailor days? Did he ask his grandpa? He even has complimentary pirate costumes for Patrick and SpongeBob. Oh, don't you feel more like pirates? Look, I'm Peggy the Pirate. <laughs> SpongeBob, does Patchy know you're stealing his likeness? Or is this where he got the inspiration? And you better be careful with how you mess around with pirates. Rick Sanchez is scared by pirates. Throw the voyage, Krabs refuses to let SpongeBob and Patrick see the map, claiming only the captain has that privilege. Can we see the map? Uh, no. Only the captain can lay eyes on the map. And they damn well better start acting like pirates. Because honestly, Krabs should know the proper etiquette. He himself was a pirate. When the voyage hits a dead end, Patrick and SpongeBob want to take a break. That sickens me. A pirate is not judged by the notches in his cutlass or the size of his booty. Yeah, he's not Nicki Minaj or Jason Momoa. However, Krabs is able to guilt them into staying. At night, Krabs acts like a jerk hole. He makes SpongeBob and Patrick sleep outside. Well, he gets a nice, clean, likely space heated tent. Curiosity salted the snail. Salted the snail. As SpongeBob and Patrick sneak into Krabs' tent to look at the map the same way teenage boys used to look in nudie mags. However, they come upon a dark secret. Krabs has lost his mind. Did you notice something familiar about this map? You mean like that it's our game board taped to a piece of paper? Do you think this is a problem? What? You? No. I just think I should lend you some of my Zoloft. Krabs gets ready to clobber them with them big meaty claws. Suddenly, they come upon the Flying Dutchman's treasure. Guess he was right. What shares? You're not getting any of my treasure. We found it together, so we deserve a share! Well, you owe Spongebob for this workplace journey, Krabs. I don't know about Patrick, but I do think you should kick a little coin his way. Thankfully, the Flying Dutchman shows up to negotiate who gets what. Nobody gets anything of substance. The Dutchman gets the treasure, because it's rightfully his, and Spongebob and Patrick get one doubloon each. Wow! Two gold doubloons! At least he did not take their souls. But what about Krabs? He did lead the expedition. Oh, don't worry. He gets properly rewarded. Gold, 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 gold. Ah. Ah. It's just a little plastic treasure chest. Plastic! Well, that's what you deserve. That and a Baker's Axe referral. Now, I'd argue that in season one, Mr. Krabs' cheapness was not that bad. At worst, it was a cute little quirk. There were a few lines he obviously would not cross. For example, when SpongeBob got too sick to work, as he had the suds, Krabs sent him home, even if this had its own problems. Nothing personal, lad. I just can't have you sneezing all over my food. <laughs> <laughs> Or when SpongeBob got the yips because he forgot the pickles on Bubble Bass's burger, he let him go home to sort himself out. Why don't you take the rest of the day off? Oh no, Mr. Krabs. Who will make the Krabby Patties? Oh, don't worry about that. We got Squidward. There's also this little moment here. Mr. Krabs, the front door is missing! 
Oh. I don't know if it means anything, I just find it cute. Then he went out of his way to go to Spongebob's house to help him, even if he definitely needed more than that. Like, this dude needs professional help. He was talking in Yoda-ish. Mr. Krabs, hello. Do you how do? And he had a raging stiffy on his face, right where his nose should be. Krabs even stays up all night to help him. I got it. Or at least attempts to, but it's the thought that counts. When SpongeBob has a freak out, he still helps him through it. I finally realized that I can't do it! I can't do it, Mr. Krabs! I'm a failure! Don't talk like that! In the end, SpongeBob is able to make a proper Krabby Patty, and when the time comes, he calls out Bubble Bass for being a fraud. Look! He's been hiding the pickles under his tongue the whole time! And there's the pickles from last time, too! I think for this episode, it helps that Krabs himself likely had a bone to pick with Bubble Bass. Because Spongebob forgot the pickles. Which, big deal, dude. I'd be mad too, but not like that angry. Bubble Bass invoked one of Krabs' long-forgotten guarantees. A uh, very fun. See, I tried to roll my R's. Oh, that. oh, and also he kept pushing around Squidward like he was a bag of winds. But Squidward was sort of rude to him, so go figure. Later, when he found out that SpongeBob and Patrick were playing with the hooks, the hooks, he tried his hardest to get them to stop. Not because he would be losing his hardest working employee and one of his best customers, but because hooks are dangerous. Boys, I wasn't quick enough. They're gone! <laughs> if I could only hold him in me arms again! He even made a whole scenario to scare Spongebob straight. Well, that was more of Spongebob than I needed to see. Mr. Squidward, that was some fine angling! Do you think the lad has learned his lesson? But he always runs around in the nude. What's the BFD? However, as the pre-movie seasons progressed, Krabs' cheapness would get to be kind of out of hand. Season 2 would feature many of his cheapest moments. In The Smoking Peanut, the zoo is having its annual free day. To Krabs, this is better than Christmas, because he doesn't have to spend any money. Instead, he steals everything. Don't worry, he knows the proper pro protocol, he'll give it back later. Just give him one million years. Also, at the event are Spongebob and Patrick, who want to see Clamu. He spits a giant pearl 100 feet in the air, like a cannonball. Spongebob, did you not see the movie Purple Fish? Clams don't like captivity. Sadly, Clamu wants to take a break, so she won't be doing stunts anytime soon. <laughs> This is the greatest day of our lives. Boring! Why does this remind me of that South Park episode where they send the whale into space? Why don't you just tell the people here at the sea park? I can't tell them because they're evil communists from the Horsehead Nebula. So they keep us in these horrible tanks and make us perform. I'm sorry, that doesn't actually happen, but that would be cool, right? Giglamu jumping, SpongeBob throws a peanut at her face, which startles her. <laughs> <laughs> Clamu goes on a rampage and starts to cry harder than I do when I listen to Elliot Smith. I'm sorry, but how can somebody so talented die so young? She even hurts Joe! Easy girl, it's me, Joe, remember? <laughs> I mean, did you not see that movie? The boy's gonna get out of this area pronto! There's nothing more dangerous than an emotionally disturbed oyster! What about an emotionally disturbed YouTuber who uses a cat as an avatar and is regularly called a furry? You call me a furry one more time and I swear I will take down your favorite character. Nah, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> SpongeBob tries to shirk responsibility, but the police launch an investigation, as does Patrick and the rest of the undersea world. Oh, I'm so close to solving this crime, I can almost taste it. <laughs> I remember 
is a kid thinking that he stole part of SpongeBob and ate him? Like, I swear I remember seeing part of SpongeBob's back missing. Eventually, the police come to SpongeBob's house and he cracks like an egg against the wall. Yes! Yes, it's true! Let's book him! Wow, you guys are good! You know, I kind of wonder how they came to that conclusion. Did they hear him say something incriminating? Did they see him snooping around? SpongeBob realizes he can't keep the light going any longer and shows up to the Bikini Bottom Zoo in order to set things straight. Meanwhile, Patrick is getting rewarded for upsetting a zoo animal by being put in the stockade. Let's throw peanuts at him and see how he likes it! Oh! I get what I deserve! How? Imagine getting rocks thrown into your throat. SpongeBob tries to confess, and he is about to get the same punishment. Oh, wait! Here's the real criminal! Uh, top of the morning! Who's that dude with the mustache? Mr. Krabs! <gasps> I can't believe it! The zoo handler presents the evidence. Mr. Krabs doesn't wipe. In truth, it turns out that Krabs stole the egg, and that's why she was crying. Oh. And as for his sticky fingers... But it's free day! <laughs> Then there's Welcome to the Chum Bucket. True, Krabs doesn't do anything totally bad. He isn't kicking puppies or using racial slurs on Twitter, especially towards squids, but he is responsible for the events of the episode. It turns out that every Thursday night, Mr. Krabs plays cards with Plankton. Not to spend quality time with his former best friend turned rival, but because Plankton is a terrible card player. Wait, I've been taking him to the cleaners every Thursday night for 15 years! I never lose! Krabs is excited, only to come to work sobbing the next day. He lost. Guess Plankton went to Atlantic City. Get, get it? Because they're underwater. Oh, forget it. However, Krabs did not lose any money. I lost you! What? I bet your contract, and I lost. Oh, what a D word. Some father figure you are. Wait, didn't Buck Strickland do that in one episode? I think it was the one where Bobby sells grills at Strickland Propane. Because of crabs, SpongeBob cannot work at the Krusty Krab. He can only work at the Chum Bucket, like a good little slave. Time to put on the official Chum Bucket Bucket helmet. But he doesn't want to go. I'm sorry, boy. <laughs> It's all my fault! <laughs> um, could you say that louder? It's all my fault! <laughs> Thank you. SpongeBob is put into a cage. I don't like Clamu. SpongeBob! scared the bejesus out of me when I was a kid. He is sent to the chum bucket, which is worse than jail. At least jail you eventually get to leave. At the Krusty Krab, Krabs can cook worth a damn, and his business is taking a nosedive. Krabs and Spongebob desperately miss each other, and Spongebob does everything in his power to keep from working for Plankton. No! Don't backsash me! No, 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 no. What? Even being turned into a robot doesn't deter him, so Plankton goes back to begging. How about you give me 50 bucks and I'll take him off your hands? It's a deal! The episode ends with SpongeBob back to work, this time a little more sassy. Now, get to those patties! Uh, I don't feel like it. Why don't you ask me later, Krabby? Ugh, if only this could stick. It seems the trend of Krabs starting the episode's plot, but not sticking around to see the consequences, would continue. In Graveyard Shift, he learns that some customers are practically illiterate. Are you open? Read the sign. I'll have a Krabby Patty Deluxe and a double chili kelp fries. When Tom tries to complain, Krabs learns that if you stay open later, you will get more money. Probably like four or five bucks extra. So he decides that the Krusty Krab will now be open 24 hours a day. See you in the morning, boys. I can't hang out here all night. I got a life. 
reminds me of that season four episode where he forces SpongeBob and Squidward to work 24 hours a day for 43 days straight and made SpongeBob cook 10,000 Krabby Patties with no breaks. But that was in season four, so I'm not going to talk about it here. The funny thing is, in this episode, he had the resources to actually make that a reality. Later on, SpongeBob and Squidward meet a dude named Hervey. According to the wiki, his name is Hervey. He was calling them throughout, but he was insanely nervous, so he sounded like a creep. Can I have a job application? I brought my own spatula. I called earlier, but I hung up because I was nervous. Which I totally understand. I have to rehearse ordering takeout. Krabs could have hired that dude to work the night shift. As we saw, there would not be that many people. He could work the register and the grill all by himself and still be fine. Krabs also started the plot off in Life of Crime. He, SpongeBob, and Patrick are watching TV at the Krusty Krab, a crustacean equivalent to Law and Order. Probably Shell and Order. Remember those tiny TVs with the really huge backs? After witnessing a heinous crime, Krabs gives his critique. There ain't nothing worse than a thief. Thieves need to be locked up forever. They should all be strung up by their gills and forced to breathe air. Krabs, what news program do you watch? However, SpongeBob offers a rebuttal. What about all the stuff you stole? That barrel. Oh, that's where I rent me pickles from. Are you renting the barrel too? Well, no. Then isn't that stealing? SpongeBob, why are you screaming? We can all hear you. What, do you want to alert the cops? SpongeBob and Patrick realize that Cribs has stolen a lot of stuff. Uh, it's... And Sandy's hedge clippers? Oh, there are... And Plankton's lawnmower? Well, he did... Even Mrs. Puff's hair curlers? That one was a gift. Be lucky it wasn't her panties. Cribs tells the duo his philosophy. He doesn't steal, he borrows. You can borrow anything you want, anytime, as long as you get it back before it's missed. Does this also apply to food? I think I should also mention Sailor Mouth, since we learned Krabs is a giant hypocrite, but I do think that's the point of the episode. SpongeBob sees a curse word on the dumpster, and with Patrick egging him on, uses it as often as Pikachu uses his name. Bye, Squidward! How the f are ya? Nice day, isn't it, Squidward? Krabs tells them not to say it, since it's a bad word, and sailors cannot say 13 specific words. Okay, boys. I want you to promise me you'll never use that word again. We promise. Now, I think one of the problems of Krabs being SpongeBob's father figure is he thinks he can tell him what to do even when he isn't at work. In Karate Choppers, he told SpongeBob that if he kept doing karate, he'd be fired. Karate! You should be making me money with your spatula. Not karate at work, but karate overall. Or when SpongeBob took Mystery to the Krusty Krab, instead of just saying, SpongeBob, be boy, please don't bring your pet to my place of business, he makes SpongeBob give up Mystery permanently. You still have that horse after I ordered you to get rid of it. Well, now I'm gonna get rid of it once and for all. Here, he forces Patrick and SpongeBob to paint the entire Krusty Krab simply because they cursed miles away from his property. Or 400 yards, according to one of the episodes. I guess he wanted free labor. At least beforehand, they cursed in his restaurant in front of his customers and ruined his business. Let's go somewhere more family-oriented. <laughs> When he goes to enforce the punishment, he steps on a rock, and all hell breaks loose. And a c**t that I ain't been helping a c**t in a boatload of c**t. Ah, uh, grabbing Out of spite, Bondrov and Patrick run to tell Betsy. We're gonna tell your mom, Mr. Krabs! No, please! Not my mommy! Oh, it doesn't feel so good, Krabs. Well, they're just doing what you told them to do. Betsy faints and then forces all three of them to paint her house. At least she offered them a glass of lemonade when they were done. What else? What else? Uh... In the Fry Cook games, he drove a wedge between SpongeBob and Patrick that nearly ruined their friendship just so he could one-up Plankton. I can't believe it, Mr. Krabs. I thought Patrick was my friend. Friend? Not in here, he ain't. Guess he was willing to repeat history. Hey, where you going? Get back here and kill each other! If you want somebody on a live so bad, you do it yourself. You're both there. Rusty Love takes a complex look at Krabs. While scolding SpongeBob on the importance of money, Krabs notices a... 
Scrumptious, curvy cutie. Hey, that's my driving teacher, Mrs. Puff. Krabs has a love at first sight meeting and wants to talk to Mrs. Puff, but finds that he's too shy and nervous. Mr. Krabs, say hello. <laughs> hey, that's me when I talk to waiters. However, Krabs manages to charm Mrs. Puff and goes out on a date with her. In his state of infatuation, Krabs ends up spending $100 on the date on a variety of needless things, like foot rubs, caricatures, a limo, live music, etc. Your bill, sir. <laughs> what? $100? Well, this can't possibly be correct! Oh, wait till he gets to 2022. In fact, Krabs did not spend $100, he spent $100,000. <laughs> <laughs> Which, honestly, I doubt highly. I think the most he spent was a couple grand. The rest was just damages to the restaurant. Instead, Krabs decides to institute a new system. SpongeBob will follow him on dates and not let him spend any money. And no matter how much I ask you, you don't give me any of me money. Now give me a dollar. Nope. Good boy, you'll do fine. The problem is, Spongebob does what he's told, so whenever Krabs asks him to buy something, he does it, no questions asked. And then he has the freaking nerve to scold him. Didn't need to buy one. You hear that, boy? We didn't need to buy a hat. Aren't you supposed to be saving me money? Even after he vows he won't ask him to buy anything, and we get a cute little montage. <laughs> You're spending all my money! In the end, Spongebob can't take it anymore, and it's always a nice sight when this happens. But Mr. Krabs, I'm only doing what you said! Then you'll say, we're not talking about this, or this, we're talking about this! However, Krabs doesn't get it through his thick shell. Lad, I can't help it if you're loose with other people's money. Oh, he done did it now. Yada, yada, Morgan Wallet! Zipping, zipping, spin! Ripping, flipping, oh. ship of Mr. Krabs' wallet! I didn't know SpongeBob had such a colorful vocabulary. Probably the most infamous was Jellyfish Hunter. Krabs starts it by being boss of the year. I'm going on my lunch break, Mr. Krabs. You got five minutes. Wow! One more minute than yesterday! What, does he time you? SpongeBob takes some jellyfish jam and puts it on his burger. When a customer takes notice, Krabs decides to have SpongeBob go and find some more jellyfish so he can make jellyfish patties full time. Oh boy, getting paid to jellyfish. That's my life's dream. Well, keep dreaming. This will be on your time. SpongeBob does so, but Krabs keeps asking him for more. More! 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 more. Unbeknownst to SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs has helped supply meat demand by making a sweatshop, ironing out jellies, doing whatever possible to make as much jellyfish jam as he can. <laughs> Whoa, Krabs was doing factory farming before it was a thing. Soon there's nothing left of jellyfish fields. And SpongeBob does not care. Well, there's no more. Now that's jellyfishing. When SpongeBob catches Wise, Krabs shoots himself in the foot. The door is voice activated and will only open if I say open. <laughs> And worse yet, he doesn't know that he can just walk away. You'll never catch me! <laughs> what? Blasted exercise craze. You know, I think I'll rank this as one of the worst things he's ever done. Like, top three worst goes without saying. Finishing up with the second worst thing Krabs has done, in season two at least, Squid on Strike. Mr. Krabs notices profits are down $3 from last month. Oh, like me when I check my YouTube stocks. And he decides he must run a tighter ship. Here's your change. Mr. Squidward! Wow. 
What's with all this change nonsense? He doesn't offer a gimmick to get customers inside or raise prices just a little bit. No, instead of a paycheck, he gives SpongeBob and Squidward bills. Now whenever they goof off, they must pay crabs, be it standing or chewing or breathing or even plain existing. There's gonna be a few changes around here. Every time I catch you two goofing off, I'm gonna charge you for it! Couldn't you just deduct that from their paycheck? Squidward decides that enough is enough. He and SpongeBob should go on strike. But SpongeBob has a big mouth. Hey, guess what, Mr. Krabs? Me and Squidward are gonna go on strike! A strike? Yeah! No. This gets them both fired, which honestly in real life is super illegal. Still, the strike goes through, but it does not do any good. Crabs hire teenagers to take their jobs. So, did you come down to help out the cause? No, I came to take your job. Hey, thanks, dude! Union scabs. The customers don't care because it does not affect them. And Squidward learns that striking means he has to work with SpongeBob potentially forever. On strike with SpongeBob forever? That night, Krabs goes to Squidward's house to beg him to come back to work. Why don't we take a little walk and uh, discuss my terms? I got a bad feeling in the pit of me wallet. They spent all night talking, and Krabs seems to come to an agreement. Unfortunately, SpongeBob got on the communist bandwagon a decade before it was cool and tears apart the Krusty Krab. I did exactly as you said, Squidward. I dismantled the establishment. Now we'll get our job back for sure. So Krabs rethinks his offer. In order to pay off these damages, you two are gonna work for me forever! I'd argue this ending is weirdly the only time he was in the right. Next to Bubble Buddy. I'm sorry, but SpongeBob was using bubble money. Season 3 would only see his cheapness increase and probably featured his worst moments. In Nasty Patty, a health inspector comes to the Krusty Krab and demands one of everything on the menu. Of course, if you're like me and watch Bob's Burgers, you know that health inspectors are to restaurants what the IRS is to rappers. You don't want them around, but they will pop up, and when they do, it's almost always a sign that you done effed up. It seems like the health inspector will pass them, but then a conveniently timed news broadcast makes Krabs think the health inspector is a phony. We've been duped! Duped! Bamboozled! We've been speckled off. That's not even a word and I agree with you. Why don't you ask him for his license or ID or car registration or whatever health inspectors have on their person to show that they're health inspectors? Instead, Krabs decides that he'll just gamble on his chance which is bad because he'll lose money, and tamper with the health inspector's burger. Not just spit on it, but full on mess with it. And he forces SpongeBob to help him. Join me, boy, or you're fired. It doesn't seem right. But it feels so good! Oh god, this is my biggest fear whenever I go out to eat. Thank you, Fight Club, for making me think my food is horribly unclean. It turns out that even if the health inspector is not a fake, he's still terrible at his job. Ah, hello delicious. Come to Papa! How do you not notice the Krabby Patty is tainted? However, the inspector chokes on a fly, and they just freaking laugh. <laughs> Look at him suffer! <laughs> Dude, if he lives, that's a lawsuit. In the commotion, they believed they've killed him. Uh, Mr. Krabs, what are we gonna do? What's this wee stuff? You fed him the tainted patty. Looks like it's the stony lonesome for you! And to avoid any form of liability, instead of just calling an ambulance, they decide to bury his body. I didn't realize this as a kid, but dang, this episode is dark. They bury his body in the outer limits of town, and Krabs swears SpongeBob to secrecy, even if honestly this is not his fault. No one can ever know about this. It'll be the end of you, it'll be the end of me, and worst of all, it'll be the end of me. Yeah, because it would be bad if something happened to you. The police stop SpongeBob and Krabs because in spite of the circumstances, they're hungry. Unfortunately, the rain makes the body fall to their feet. Um, you have to dig it a little deeper. And they decide to hide him from the cops by stuffing him in the freezer. But what do you want me to do with the box? Bottles of soda! Bottles of soda, same thing, put them in the freezer. In the end, the guilt eats away at Krabs like a fresh Krabby Patty, and he tells the police what happened. Okay, I confess! 
SpongeBob killed him! Thankfully, the health inspector turns out to somehow be alive, and instead of suing SpongeBob and Krabs or shutting down the restaurant, he decides to pass them. Come on, everybody! Krabby Patties at half price! Well, not really. Is a kid, I thought he said half rice. I would love that. Burgers and white rice seems pretty good. Then there's one Krabs trash. Krabs holds a yard sale and sells his hunks of junk, be it umbrellas with holes in them or a lollipop with underwear on it. During this time, he sells SpongeBob a novelty drink hat. <laughs> Mr. Krabs, I found 68 cents, but maybe you could take the other $4.32 out of my paycheck. Well, I don't know. Uh, okay. Soon after, a bunch of dudes in suits and one dress come to tell Krabs that he has a rare vintage drink hat that is potentially worth millions after taxes. Sir, I'll give you a million dollars for that hat! SpongeBob! So Krabs tries to get it back from SpongeBob by any manner necessary. For example, he gives SpongeBob a bunch of silly hats he probably bought at Spencer's. The juicer? Ooh. Foxy Grandpa! Ah! I think I gave a hat like that to somebody for their birthday. In one instance, he defies the laws of physics to scare SpongeBob with a paper ghost! Ah! <laughs> and also a shopping list. A floating shopping list! Ah! No, the galleries! Said ghost claims that the hat is from a dude named Smitty Werbin Jaegerman Jensen. Uh, uh, Smitty something! Smitty what? Uh, Smitty Werbin Jaegerman Jensen! Believe it or not, Spellcheck actually corrected this perfectly, so thank you, Spellcheck. And if he does not give back the hat, he will be cursed. Too bad Smitty is a real person. I, did. I just did it! I would. Give me that shovel! Time for a little midnight grave robin. At first, Krabs has a moment of doubt. A grave! Am I really gonna defile this grave for money? But only a moment. Of course I am! <laughs> Jackpot! He digs up the body and retrieves the hat. Turns out the dead and the bikini bottom turn into spooky, scary skeletons. Then you eat my brain and leave my body for the buzzards! That's disgusting. We just want the hat back. Krab spends all night fighting off Smitty and his goons and goes back home to start the bidding. And that's what we get something called karma. Didn't you hear? They found a whole warehouse full of them. They're worthless! <laughs> <laughs> Too bad he doesn't totally get it in Can You Spare a Dime? Before closing, Krabs can't find the first dime he ever made and accuses Squidward because Squidward is the cashier. There are three possibilities. One, you stole it. Two, you stole it. Or three, you stole it! Angered, Squidward quits. However, he ends up homeless and taken in by SpongeBob. Okay, but just till I get a job. Nonsense, you stay as long as you need to. The coddling turns Squidward into a freeloader who refuses to look for a job and forces his new landlord to dress up like some kind of weird role-playing fantasy. And why aren't you in uniform? Angered at both parties, SpongeBob drags Squidward down to the Krusty Krab to demand he be given his job back. But Krabs refuses, so SpongeBob does something he rarely does. Stand up to his boss. Listen, you crustaceous cheapskate! Squidward's been living at my house driving me crazy! And you're not gonna hire him back all because of a stupid dime! Whoa, good job, boy. In the process, he finds the first dime, which actually makes these little moments ten times funnier. Wrong! That ain't my first dime! Except... Where is it? Where is it? Krabs rehires Squidward, but shows that he hasn't learned a single thing. Well, it's obvious that you put the dime in me pants. Dimes just don't fly into people's pants. Are you accusing me of something? I think by this point, you know Krabs is so cheap that he doesn't even care about children. Donate to the children's fund? Why? What have children ever done for me? But Krusty Land shows just how valuable they are. Upon discovering that kids are let out for summer break, he decides to turn the Krusty Krab into a playground. Of course, he doesn't want to spend his lucky dime, and he doesn't have the handiwork of Hank Hill, so he makes this monstrosity. He 
forces SpongeBob to keep the kids at bay while he counts their money and presumably books the talent he calls Krabby the Clown. Is his father a Jewish rabbi? SpongeBob has the tar beaten out of him to please the little brats, and Krabs doesn't care. I can't take much more of this stalling stuff. Always thinking about yourself. Get out there and stall! He decides enough is enough and allows Krabby to perform. Hey kids! Uh, thank you all for coming! Thank you! Eat plenty of Krabby Patties! <laughs> you know, I don't think Krabby the Clown is the right name. GB the Jeep's Gate! That's better. What about the children? The children? I don't care about the children! I just care about their parents' money! Krabs, why do you sound like the CEO of HBO Max? Thankfully, Krabs gets karma a thousand fold. Uncle Krabs has to go to the bank now. <laughs> Get him! The kids steal his money, he gets beaten up, and he gets subjected to Dom Subplay. Let me go! I gotta get some of that green stuff! No! Not that green stuff! I will say that karma is delicious, and a big reason why I love crabs. Even in clams, after spending the entire episode badgering Spongebob and Squidward, and finally using them as bait, he still gets everything he wants. Me million dollar! So eventually we settled on a trade. What'd you get him? Nothing important. True, he doesn't see it that way, but it still works. Then we get Krabs' arguably worst episode of the pre-movie seasons. Born Again Krabs. One day, Spongebob finds a rotten Krabby Patty and tries to throw it away. And you know it's bad when even he won't cook it. I found that under the grill. And tomorrow, a customer will find it under his butt. Krabs tells him he isn't allowed to make another patty until that one is sold, which goes about as well as expected. We haven't had a customer in weeks! Have you lost your mind? It's that old patty you keep trying to sell to everybody! To prove they're overreacting, Krabs eats the patty himself, and this happens. Make sure you wrap up that patty! I'm not finished with it yet! You know, I would probably be the same way. I paid good money for that food. Because of this, Krabs presumably dies. And he can't scam the Flying Dutchman, so he's taken to Davy Jones's locker to be stuffed in there for all eternity and listen to Sleepy Jean. Davy Jones works out a lot. These are his socks. Get in! Oh, but how will he fit? Krabs begs for a second chance, and the Dutchman allows it. But you must always be generous. Never cheat. You have me word as a sailor. No, I think the Dutchman meant don't go overboard with the cheapness. Obviously, Krabs could save a penny here and there or buy store brand food, but he should not be selling rotten Krabby Patties or giving Pearl $2 boots because he's too cheap to afford to get her Jimmy Choo's. Still, he takes this to mean he can never be cheap and offers all sorts of pleasantries. You know what that means, right? I don't go hungry. No, silly! It means free toy! This comes at a massive cost. Now he owes $10,000 and he has no money to pay for it. He doesn't care. Oh, it's just a bad dream. I'll wake up soon. I'm still in the hospital, sleeping like a baby. This is your version of a bad dream. Realizing reality is a thing, Krabs has a freak out and defies the laws of physics to get back every dime he owes. Show's over, Keepsgate! <laughs> And also he does this. Danny! Your luck just ran out! Hey man, he's back! You're crushing my arm! Unhand that penny or the arm comes off! This earns him the attention of the Flying Dutchman. Thankfully, Spongebob comes to his defense, betting his soul that Krabs won't sell him for a couple of bucks. The Dutchman decides to teach Spongebob a harsh lesson. If you had to choose between Spongebob and all the money I have in my pocket, which would you take? Guess what happens. Seriously, just guess. Krabs sells SpongeBob's soul, not for a couple of bucks, but for 62 cents. Take the money. Mr. Krabs! Here you go, Krabs. Next stop, Davy Jones' locker! <laughs> Dude, 
He's your surrogate son. Don't you remember when you felt bad when you hid his special boots? What would you even buy with 62 cents? What the heck is wrong with you? Even Squidward calls him out on it. He stuck up for you and you sold him out? You should be ashamed of yourself! And you know you're screwed when even Squidward has a problem with you. Krabs once again realizes the error of his ways. Not because he damned an innocent person for what amounts to loose lint, but because he lost his main money maker. I want another chance! I didn't learn anything! I lost my best fry cook! Fight me. He gets so lucky the Dutchman has zero patience or he would have paid the consequences. Thankfully, SpongeBob semi calls him out. You did it for the Krusty Krab. I would have done the same thing. You would have? No. Ah! So as you can see, Krabs is insanely cheap, and he always has been. The thing is, the later seasons styled up this despicable trait and rarely, if ever, gave him comeuppance. Or if he did get comeuppance, it was not enough. Now, I believe the episode Friend or Foe touches on why he's like this. In that episode, we learn Krabs grew up poor. So poor he could only wear rags, which caused all the kids at school to make fun of him and call him Rag Boy. Twas true. I did get me clothes from the trash. When I was growing up, times were tough. Me mother had to fashion me clothes from rags. Maybe he subconsciously doesn't want to go back to that lifestyle. Who knows? I mean, come on. When he was a kid, he was so poor that his father gave him a dollar. And because he had to spend it on a soda, he thought this was tantamount to shooting his dog. And I was so thirsty. <laughs> I spent it on a soda! <laughs> Still, Krabs is one of my favorite SpongeBob characters in spite of the flanderization. I just hope the newer seasons have found a good balance. It's a good thing that he basically did the money equivalent of marrying your body pillow. <laughs>